I'm getting a few gray hairs now, so I think the <laughs> up and coming starting to go away a little bit. <laughs> Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today we've got an awesome guest on. His name is Wes Santos. He is the GM at the Hyatt Regency, Sarasota, Florida, and he's going to come on obviously give us the highlights of what's going on in the Sunshine State, but also go talk a little bit about his story. And it sounds exciting. I think you guys will definitely enjoy it. Hey, Wes, how you doing? I'm great, Ted. How are you? So great to be on here today. Always love following your content and everything you're doing with the hospitality industry. We really appreciate it. Hey, no problem. We thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time. We always like having these kind of informal sit down get to know your gm type uh segments and today you're the guy <laughs> all right all right i'll take it i'll take it <laughs> so, so let's let's before we start we always like to ask our guests how did you get in the hospitality space was that a long-term dream did it happen on you just out of you know happenstance how, how did you get in the hospitality space well, I'll tell you, like many hoteliers, uh, completely by accident was not something um, I had uh, set up. I actually, my father, who still works at the same hotel that I first began at, it's a little Hilton Garden Inn in Norwalk, Connecticut. I had to give him a little shout out here. Um, my father opened that property back in 2000. And, um, you know, I think two to three years after high school, I, you know, me looking to him to, to, to pay that cell phone bill and uh, other expenses I had. He said, we're going to put you to work. Um, so my hospitality, you know, experience began right in food and beverage, bussing tables for him on the weekends. He was a chef supervisor at the property and, you know, really just began that way. Um, didn't really know what to expect. It was a weekend gig at the time where I would come in, make a few extra tips and uh, and, and go on my way. Uh, but like many hoteliers, you know, the, the industry has a very unique way of sucking you in. Yeah. And and the one thing about the hotel space is you either love it or you hate it. <laughs> That's absolutely true. You know, it's, it's something I say every single day with our team members. You know, there's really no in between. You can't uh, you can't halfway in, in this industry, especially if you want to go far. Um, but again, it has that unique uh, way of sucking you in and, and it, it's very easy to fall in love with it. So many facets and, you know, no day is the same, which I think today till this day, you know, for me is what makes it fun. Yeah, that is, that is a true statement. So you mentioned your father and I read a little post, I think on your LinkedIn page, would you tell our audience a little bit about your story and how you guys got over here and kind of how you got the got to where you are today. Sure, sure. I appreciate that. Yes. Um, you know, uh, a, a true immigrant story. You, were, I was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, um, and, you know, where my parents are from. And, uh, you know, back back in the late 80s, it was, uh, you know, was one of those situations where there were a lot of opportunities to come to the United States, um, begin a life out here. And, you know, within within a few years after I was born, my father made the decision to come to the States without us, my brother and my mom, we stayed back for a few years. And, um, you know, hospitality, you know, started all over again. He, my father began as an oil rig engineer in Brazil, did that for a few years and um, came to the States to work at an Italian pizza restaurant in Connecticut of all places. Um, he was able to, you know, work for a number of years and, get his paperwork in order to eventually bring us here. So, um, you know, that that's where his cooking experience started. You know, he got here washing dishes and then eventually got into prep. As you know, you know, anybody going in the kitchen, that's how it usually works. You got to put in your time and effort. Um, but did that for a couple of years and was able to bring us here. So, um, you know, it, it, it's been you know, it's been a really amazing story for our entire family. Um, you know, to, to kind of be where we are today. But a lot of that started with that decision that he made back then uh, to, to bring us here. Yeah, kudos to your dad for being able to to make that leap and put in the time and effort to try to put all the pieces together so you guys can come over here and, and have and make a better life for yourself. So kudos to you because you're obviously doing well. So I'm sure he's proud of you as well. 
Yeah, no, it's great. You know, in this summer, we had the, the great opportunity. You know, I got to bring my family, two kids and wife and my father over to Brazil and kind of walk uh, by the, the home we lived in back then. So it was a really special moment for us to be able to do that together. Yeah. Hey, that's awesome. So tell us a little bit about your career so far. Understand that, you know, you were, you know, I guess what they call one of those up and coming type guys. You, you're, you're <laughs> uh, yeah, they used to call that, right? I'm getting, I'm getting a few gray hairs now. So I think the up and coming starting to go away a little bit. <laughs> well, well, if, if you, if you, if you look at my gray hairs and your gray hairs, I think you're still up and coming. Uh, talk a little bit about that. <laughs> talk a little bit about your story, man. You, you are, a, you are a high flyer. You, you became a, a GM at an early age. How, talk about that. How did you get there? Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. It, you know, that that goes really back down to some of the principles I still stick to today. It's just the people you surround yourself with, right? Um, I was very fortunate at that very hotel that I told you about that I began to work for to have a GM that was, you know, constantly on the floor, uh, constantly motivating his team members and somebody who you can look up to say, man, maybe that's something I want to do one day. Um, and is really where my curiosity started. So, you know, a as you know, Ted, you know, you start in the kitchen, but then there's a need somewhere else, right? In hotels, there's always going to be a need. So it's, hey, we need you to do this. We need you to work in maintenance for a week and help out over there. Um, for me, it was easy to translate the, you know, being on the food and beverage side to helping out in areas like the front desk, and um, and within that hotel, I think p prior to me leaving and um, probably two to three years after that, I probably worked four or five different jobs. Um, and at that point was beginning to see, wow, this is it, it's great to get all this experience. But, you know, you start becoming more curious in different things. It's not that mundane job where you're doing the same thing every single day. You're able to see how the entire operation works. Um, which for me, even today, I mean, it is just the best part of my job, you know, um, while there's plenty for me to do here in my office and, and reports to get out, I know I can spend a good percentage of my day with the maintenance team to see what they're doing and spending some time with the front desk and seeing how I can help. So, um, you know, those early years were pretty fundamental. And, and, and again, it's the mentors that I had that allowed me to work at the front desk and spend some time in engineering. I will tell you my favorite job of all there was driving the shuttle. Um, I still, you know, yes, in, 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 in 30 years, 35 years, if I can go back to that, I will take that as a part-time job. Um, you know, a, a lot of fun to just drive around and, you know, get to know people. I think that for me as, you know, as a 17 year old kid at that point, two years in, um, you know, it allowed me to kind of, you know, break out of this. I, I, I had a very, very shy persona um, growing up. And, you know, hospitality kind of forces you to interact with people, get to know them and, you know, come out of your shell a little bit. So those early years were very, um, very you know, very fundamental for me, but allowed me to kind of break out and, and, and start doing some other things outside of outside of that first hotel. Yeah. And, and you know, the, the one great thing about the hospitality space is, you know, you can be the bellman, you know, and then you can go all the way up to the CEO of the company, you know, so you, you can, you can move all the way to the top from the bottom to the top relatively, I'm not going to say it's relatively easy, but you can do it. And that's the great stories that I always run across in the hospitality space. Yeah, there's no secret, right? I mean, I a lot of our young, you know, uh, managers and supervisors who aspire one day to be directors and GMs, you know, I tell them it's, you know, you show up every single day with the right attitude um, and the right mentality and make sure that you're aligning, aligning yourself right the, around the right people. Um, I think that's half of it, to be honest. And, and you know, looking for those mentors and individuals that are going to help get get you to that next level is really important. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you start out, you become a GM at this early age, and then it, it almost sounds like you kind of just decided you wanted to, to go from A to B to C to D, all these different places, absolutely. I guess. Absolutely, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so talk about that. <laughs> pick and choose, pick and choose. So yeah, my my senior year in college, um, I, I was a AGM at that time, 
had a phenomenal GM, different hotel now, um, which, you know, uh, the GM, again, you know, hats off to him and, and helped me a lot um, to, to kind of get through that next, get to that next level. But I would come in in the morning, work for a few hours for him, leave at 1130 for class, come back at two, and then finish out my day seven, eight o'clock that night. I did that for about a year. Um, and it really allowed me to kind of see the AM and the PM operation um, and get a good sense of what it was like to be general manager of a property. It was nice not to have the pressure, right, and have to answer to owners and, you know, management companies. But the debt GM at the time allowed me to to really dive in um, and and get to see how it the hotel works from a financial perspective, because I think a lot of folks, when you're in it and you're operating, you know, you can over time, it, it becomes pretty easy to see how all the moving parts work together. Um, but, I, you know, I think the last piece of it to get to GM role is understanding the financials. And at the end of the day, you're there to make money for the owners. Right. Um, uh, you know, it, it's we, we can talk rah rah and, you know, guest satisfaction obviously is key that correlates with making money for the property. But at the end of the day, you can have all those things. If the hotel doesn't make money, then, you know, they're, they're, it, it, it's not going to work ultimately. So um, once I graduated, Ted, I said to myself, OK, you know, I grew up in, in that small town in Connecticut and um, work, growing up in that environment, everybody, you know, who worked in hospitality either wanted to go to Boston or New York. That was kind of the next big thing. Right. We don't go outside of that general area. We stick to, you know, we stick to those two big cities. And um, I began interviewing at that time for GM roles um within you know upstate connecticut you know border massachusetts area just to kind of get a little bit further away from home and i would have these phenomenal phone interviews and they love my resume but when i showed up you know baby face no beard just uh you know to 20, 23 years old it was uh the conversation changed a little bit and looking back on it rightfully so um but, you know, had a, had a few interviews that, you know, I thought went very well, but at the end just, you know, wasn't in the cards for me. Um, so immediately began to say, you know what, maybe I need to get an experience as an AGM at a larger hotel, put a few more years in before I can actually become a GM. I kind of reached out to a few of my mentors and they said, listen, you know, we understand you feel ready, but sometimes timing is a part of it. Um, so I began to go down that path and ended up in um, Uncasville, Connecticut at a uh, casino, uh, a hotel near the casino for an AGM role. Had an interview with the GM. Him and I hit it off instantly. Um, knew I had the whole, you know, I knew I had the job in the bag. I said, this is great. I mean, we just clicked on so many levels. And he comes back into the room and says, Wes, I'd like to offer you the job. But my vice president of operations in here is, is here. He happens to be in town and he would like to meet you. So I sit with this guy again, had, had not met him before. And within 10 minutes, he said, listen, we can hire you here today. However, in six months, you're going to jump and go somewhere else. I have a GM opportunity that I'd like you to take on in Charlotte, North Carolina, which at that point, to be honest with you, I didn't even know where Charlotte and North Carolina was. Okay. Again, I was in this bubble growing up. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I, I kind of sat on it and uh, of course, you know, was, was very happy with the offer, but my mind wasn't ready to understand moving out of state, never mind moving to the South. Um, but ga gave it a day or two and, you know, decided to, to, to take on that role, which landed me my first GM job. So uh, Fairfield Inn and & Suites right outside of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Very good experience and, um, you know, good, good first GM role. I definitely learned a lot and uh, learned a lot on the fly, I will say, in that opportunity. Wow. So now you took, I think from Charlotte, you went to... I don't know. You bounced around quite a bit, including sure, Savannah, sure. which, by the way, is my yes, home state. Yes. So before is it dive, really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> before we dive into it, which you, you, you and I are talking so fast, I got to give a shout out to my sponsor. Otherwise, they won't allow us to keep doing the TED Hospitality. Man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give, give, me, give me one minute. Let me give them a shout out. 
say THM View is this episode is being sponsored by Recover It. If you've experienced a home fire, tornado, or other natural disaster, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, the Recover It app is a new app that allows you to record everything in your home, store it in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike versus you trying to recall all of your household valuables, jewelry, heirlooms, et cetera, allows you to settle your claims with your insurance company much faster. Check out the Recover It app today. Use the promo, the promo code on screen to get 50% off. And as always, we like to remind our viewers to please follow us here on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this episode with Wes will be available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And as always, we appreciate all of your thoughts, feedback, and comments on each segment. Now, Wes, you went to Charlotte. What happened after that? How, lo how long were you in Charlotte? Two and a half years. Um, you know, us, us hoteliers have this, and I, I think I had it for the first 10 years of my career, which, you know, you, you start getting this itch after two years, you get the hotel where you want it. You've got some high performing, you know, employees right behind you that, you know, are ready to take that next step. And, um, you know, just got an itch to try something different. We had a very successful two years. One G we won a hotel of the year. Um, within our second year. And uh, we just felt like we, we went, I went in there, we did everything we sought out to do. And it was, it, it was ready for me to get a, a bigger challenge. It was a 94 room hotel. Um, so I just felt like if I'm going to continue to further my career the, in, in the manner that I'd like to, I've got to take on a bigger role, which landed me in Savannah, Georgia. So very fortunate to, um, within the same management company, Ted. And as you know, that, that, that's key in a lot of, you know, um, a lot of professionals in the industry, you know, management companies and how that all works, was able to take on a airport hotel in Savannah, Georgia, which I will tell you was, was you know, a very fun time, uh, a, a great city. I, you know, it, it's one I'll always go back to and visit. So you did Savannah, which like I said, is my home state. You probably got to participate in a few St. Patty Day parades, I'm assuming. That I did. Do not underestimate the ability to walk around with the beverage in your hand downtown. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, you know, it's funny. I, uh, I ended up one of my really good friends till this day, you know, was uh, one of my groomsmen in my wedding actually was the rival GM across the street from me. And we ended up uh, for a, a good period for the first year rooming uh, or living together um, in in Savannah, Georgia, right downtown in a, uh, a nice little uh, unit um, right near Broad St or Broughton Street, I would say. The main drag. And, and I would tell you, I mean, it was a very, very uh, fun city to be in. You know, tourism, obviously, it's one of those cities where, you know, it, it, you're going to get the tourism year round. Um, and there's always exciting things happening there. So um, that was fun. Did that for two years, really enjoyed it. But again, got the itch again. And um, at that time, wanted to try something a little bit different. Um, and ended up in in Washington D.C. of all places. It was great, you know. It was it was really my first experience at a urban downtown hotel. Um, it was a Hyatt property right on K Street. We were kitty corner to uh, the White House, so as you can imagine, you know, a lot of high profile uh, guests arriving, different than anything I had done before, because again, you know, you go from these two tourism heavy. Um, you know, places, vacation, you know, it, it's a good stop through going down 95 to, uh, you know, to, to the Capitol. It was, it, it was definitely an adjustment for me, um, but had a great experience there. Very fortunate. We, um, three months after joining the property, the owners decided to put a rooftop bar on the hotel, which was an experience in itself. You know, the team and I really got to be a part of, uh, you know, putting the menus together and ideas and one thing I'll find out, if you put a rooftop in D.C., you cannot go wrong. Um, it is uh, it, you, you cannot go wrong with that. So ha ha had a lot of fun during that project. That was um, that was an interesting time to be there with everything going on politically at the time as well. So good to get that experience under my belt, but not sure I would uh, would be in a, you know, a, a downtown environment like that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's a busy environment kind of. You know, a lot, is, of a lot of pressure there. 
<laughs> a, a lot of pressure and you know things can swing one way or another um you know with with whatever's happening in the news cycle so that that was challenging but fun at the same time definitely um you know a, a part of my career i always cherish and look back on but um you know a, a lot of challenges there for sure yeah so it's so you've done the what so you've done charlotte you've done savannah now you've done dc i think you spent some time in California, and then you ended up in Sarasota, right? Absolutely, so, yeah. Su sunny Sarasota now. <laughs> so you you're not you're not getting the itch there. You got a lot going on there. So you got uh, no. You know, I tell you, I, I I've been here three <laughs> years, and um, you know, we've got some exciting things ahead, which which makes it easier to kind of you know not get the itch as much. But um, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I had the least expectation for, for Sarasota moving here after my time in California, coming to Florida was just a, you know, we had our struggles after, after the pandemic in California. And at the time really wasn't seeing it, it you know, anything ahead that would, um, that would get the hotels back to operating level, um, which, you know, which we are now. So I, you know, ended up coming to Florida and I, I'll, I'll tell you, Ted, I mean, it's an, if you haven't visited yet, you have an open invitation to, to come in and check us out here. Cause it is, it is a utopia. I have, you know, I, I have not seen before. It, it's a great area to be in. Yeah. Well, I definitely have to check out Sarasota. That's not a side of Florida that I've spent much time on. So I, uh, I need to, I need to get on that side of Florida and see what's going on over there. But but you've got some great things happening for your building, right? What's what's coming up with your with your hotel? You're going through some some major changes. We are, we are a big redevelopment happening next year. So a, just a little history on our property. We are the oldest hotel here in the Sarasota area. We were the first property here. Uh, 1970 is when this property um, opened, and you know it has really just been a staple for the community. Um, you know. To this day, I run into folks or meeting folks here at the property where they've had their wedding here or they've had their kids get married here, birthday parties, events. Um, it, it's been, you know, uh, a, a really a legacy hotel for this area. And um, a few years back when our ownership group took over, there was a there were talks of doing a redevelopment for the site. And we will actually be closing at some point next year and somewhere between summer and fall. And the hotel will be redeveloped into a beautiful Thompson brand, still with Hyatt, um, a beautiful Thompson brand right in you know our downtown area. I mean, you you cannot find a better piece of real estate than what we sit on right now. We we look at one of our one side of our building looks directly at a beautiful marina, and the other side right looking out to the bay. So um, it's going to be an amazing project once it's all done definitely going to be the premier property here in the sarasota market yeah thompson is a wonderful brand i, I love that hotel so that's that's a yeah, speaking of i the the one in savannah is very impressive so if, if, if you're yeah. in savannah again before you make it to sarasota that's one you'll want to check out yeah well I, you know most of my time i get in savannah i spend with my folks so that's the one time okay. i go home and i'm like well i'm not looking for a hotel but i do get to go out sometimes so i gotta go by and check there it you out go sure you know absolutely absolutely man so, so west man it's been it's been great talking to you you know you and i could probably keep going for about another 30 45 absolutely. minutes an hour <laughs> of course i know our audience have a short attention span so we have to keep it short but it's a it's a absolutely. pleasure talking to you man i am so proud of you and the accomplishments you're making i love the story with your dad and, and the sacrifice he made for you guys so man my hat's off to your whole family so keep up the good work, and uh, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna keep my my camera open so I can see what you're doing down there in Florida, man. Because it sounds like you go. Make sure you come see me live again. Uh, we've got we've got a little a, li a little over a year before you know before <laughs> b before we've got some changes happening, but still a great area to be in. And um, again, Ted can't can't thank you enough. I followed you for some time now. Um, love you know, how much of a ba ambassador you are for the industry um, and love hearing the stories as well. I think that's what drives a lot of us every day is, is, you know, when we have our, our, our tough days in the hotel, which we know it happens, 
um, you know, we know we know others are going through the same thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So we, we're all in it together, brother. But but thank you so much for your time. Yes, and uh, this has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Please remember, follow us on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can catch this episode with Wes and I on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And don't forget to check out the Recover It app. Use the promo code and get 50% off. And this is Ted with another Ted's Hospitality Minute, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for joining us. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.